So, everyone, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. And I'm so thrilled to introduce my guest today, Lisa Bain from Lindblad Expeditions. And we are going to hear what makes Lindblad Expeditions so incredibly unique. So, Lisa, take it away. Wonderful. Thanks, Lisa. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I have some great stuff I want to share with everybody today. Um, you know, there's so much to the history of who Limblad Expeditions is. And so I really want to share some of that. But first, I want to thank Lisa for allowing me this wonderful opportunity to share what we do and how we do it around the world, because it does make a huge difference. Now, I think it's a really good time to share a little of who we are and how we got here. For us, it all started when Lars Eric Lindblad undertook the very first expedition to Antarctica way back in 1966. Now, that was really quickly followed in 1967 with the first trip to the Galapagos Islands. And now Lars Eric is respected really as the father of small ship expedition experience. And he believed that educated people who saw things with their own eyes would be a potent force for the preservation of those places. And that belief has really become a powerful force for the good of conservation and, and restoration projects worldwide. Now, his son, Sven Limblad, has not only maintained that legacy set by his father, he has continued to introduce our guests to new geographies. He's deepened the commitment to key destinations. We've introduced new programs, state-of-the-art equipment, and that really allows for a much deeper experience. Now, he also regarded his explorer father as pretty much a hero, and he was always enthralled by the National Geographic magazine, society, its roster of explorers, past and current. And, and from the National Geographic standpoint, they believe that there simply is no one who does not love, right, love the idea of exploring the world and knowing its wonders or having a fleet of ships like we do that you can do it on. So the alliance was a natural and it really does create a wonderful proposition for you when you travel. Thanks to the Limblad National Geographic Alliance, you get the chance to sail aboard the fleet to the planet's most extraordinary places, but you're also in the company of world-renowned scientists, naturalists, educators, researchers, and you get to explore alongside some really skilled specialists. Um, and they're using pretty cool state-of-the-art exploration tools. Now, as I mentioned, Lars Eric Limblad was the first to take guests to Antarctica, right, in 1966. No other company has more experience in this region. We were first. We have helped to establish protocols that protect the places we visit from Antarctica to Galapagos. Actually, little known fact, but really important, Lars Eric Limblad paid the wages of the first two park wardens in Galapagos to ensure that the park was established. That was a real commitment. Now, our expeditionary teams, as you see them today, pretty much exist because of those early expeditions, the knowledge that we gained through experience and honed over the many years of travel. The expedition leaders like the wonderful Tom Ritchie that you see here, Tom has visited Antarctica over 160 times. So, so many of our team have been with us for years and they still have this real childlike wonder when they speak with our guests. You know, it, it really is their ability to share their passion for these places. There are no silly questions. It is all about helping you understand what you're seeing and experience. It's their desire to educate, to inspire. And really it's in the hope that you will return as a passionate advocate for the protection of the places that you're visiting, right? Which was the entire reason that we started in the very first place. So the team that we have aboard is supported by a range of expeditionary tools, such as underwater drones and remote operated vehicles that allows our team to go deeper and share more of that amazing marine environment beneath our ships. When you're sitting on a ship, 300, you, know, you want that 360 degree view and 50% of the experience is sitting beneath you. If you don't get the chance for that to open up and be available to experience, that's a great loss. 
Um, we have video microscopes so that we can see the smallest little creatures, check for microplastics in the waters, look at the health of those oceans that we're sitting on and, and visiting. Zodiacs for up-close exploration. These are really the workhorse of expedition. Um, it allows you access to really remote little areas, including, and in the South Pacific, we have this great glass-bottom zodiac. Um, so even if you're not a diver or a snorkeler, it opens up that marine biodiversity beneath us. Um, kayaking, this is that, that water level perspective, but kayaking or paddle boards, it's really up close wildlife encounters. It's a very different perspective on the place that you're visiting. And, and there's really cool activities depending on the time of year, like skiing or snowshoeing in Antarctica. That's in the early season when you have all that great sea ice and you can get out there. Imagine being able to go cross country skiing in Antarctica. Now, what's really cool, this is an expedition. All those expeditionary experiences are included in your expedition. So all the fun stuff that we get to do. Um, now, we know more about space than we do the deepest parts of our oceans, right? So understanding the remarkable marine biodiversity beneath our ships is so, so important. And it really is a part, as I said, of that 360 degree experience. We have a dedicated underwater dive team and they really do ensure that all of you on all of our ships get this opportunity to really understand what is happening beneath us in these remarkable oceans. They dive all over the world from the really frigid waters down in Antarctica and the Arctic to the tropical waters in the South Pacific. So, and they film in high resolution and they get to share that footage in the evenings with our guests. These marine ecosystems that they share are, are, are what they're passionate about. And often they will get the chance to capture species that we seldom see. Um, and so they get to share the stories of the ocean currents, what is happening around the world and how something we do here at home can impact the places that we're visiting. We're all interconnected. Now, Sven Lindblad introduced photography to expedition. It, it really is an intrinsic part of the experience. It's so that you can learn and capture images and moments that will be available to you share, to share and hold dear for years and years to come. Our Lindblad National Geographic Photography Program really does ensure that you get to travel with either a National Geographic photographer or a certified photo instructor on all of our departures. Now, their expertise and support is included in your expedition. They're available throughout the day to assist with photography classes, hands-on assistance. They're in the field. They're with you, standing next to you, helping you understand that best aspect. If you need to get down low and take a photo to change where the wildlife appears in your image. We have a terrible habit of putting everything in the center of the lens. You know, you need to understand how you can create these amazing images to take home with you. Um, we also have dedicated photo kiosks on our ships where you can download your images, share with fellow guests, get to learn other techniques on how to share your, your, these great um, photos that you've taken. Now, if you add to this, we have this great relationship with B&H Photography. Um, they are a renowned New York photo store. And on nearly all of our Lindblad National Geographic ships now, we offer what's called a BNH photo locker. Now, this is complimentary to you, and it allows you to go and check out state of the art equipment. It might be a zoom lens, a, a camera body, a mirrorless camera body, a, sorry, a mirrorless camera, uh, Swarovski crystal binoculars. But you get to check them out, use them for 24 hours, bring them back, and then trial another piece of equipment. It's just a great way if you're thinking, you know, I really want that. That zoom lens now you get the chance to try before you buy so it's just another great option on board of our ships so look Limblad is a leader in responsible travel and sustainability we are 100 carbon neutral company we really are committed to green business operations and preserving the planet now you know if we don't take care of it it's not going to be there for future generations to explore and experience as we are now um, our curious and committed travelers, the people who have been with us up until now have committed over $19 million since 1997 to protect the ocean, to conserve wildlife, to, to bolster local communities. And it really does allow and enable meaningful scientific research in the places we, we travel. We bring our guests face to face with wildness. And what we want to do is inspire them, you, to care about these remarkable places. Our goal is to create planetary stewards, 
The more we do to protect the place we share, the greater the opportunity, as I said, for those next generations to explore it. So where do we go? Well, this is always a really big question. It's always a hard one to answer because we cover all seven continents. We travel from the Galapagos to French Polynesia, from the Mediterranean to Iceland, from Antarctica to the Arctic. So there are so many places and Lisa and I have been going through some of these and, and often people go, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could get there. The, the way we approach it is with small ships, these intimate little vessels built specifically for the places we're going. So it's not cookie cutter. Every ship is different and it's designed for where it's traveling to. So our biggest ship is only 148 guests. Guests, not cabins, 148 guests. And our smallest is 28 guests on the Amazon. This is about a community of like-minded people traveling together, inquisitive, wanting to learn, wanting to understand it, wanting to be off that ship as much as possible in the place we're exploring. And we're really excited because we have this stunning, two stunning new ships that have joined us. And that is the National Geographic Endurance and the National Geographic Resolution. And I just wanted to take a minute to share these because rather than go larger we actually went smaller with these really remarkable vessels we chose to do these at 126 guests so think about that that's only 69 cabins and there's 53 of those with balconies including all of our 12 solo cabins and we have dedicated solo cabins on all of our ships but the national geographic endurance launched last year the sister the resolution floated out just a few days ago so we have two of these really remarkable next generation expedition ships. And they really are purpose built for remote navigation to allow us to go farther. Um, they're fully stabilized, they're ice class pole. Now this, you've got to listen to this because there's a lot of information. They are ice class polar code PC5 category A class vessels. Try saying that three times fast. Um, but what that means is they are built to safely go in the ice pretty much year round. And they have that really cool pointy nose. That's called a patented X bow. And the X bow technology provides an extremely smooth ride, even in adverse conditions. So as you're heading across the world's oceans and seas, these ships are all about st stability and safety and this strength in these really remarkable places. But these are beautiful platforms for exploration, this stunning lounge. Now, this is a really important part of who we are. You'll see in the center there is this circle. We call that the circle of truth. This is where our expedition team will present, will share, will impassion you, our guests, each evening. We come together as a community. We get the chance to learn, to understand what did we see today? How is that important? And what are the opportunities for tomorrow? Because, you know, we want to be able to plan. But the best part of an expedition is we always have um, option A through Z ready because true expedition is about taking advantage of those opportunities. We see a pod of killer whales, we're stopping so that we can spend time to see them, understand them, hopefully hear them. Um, often they will come up and interact in, in Antarctica. That We're enrichment to them. It's really quite remarkable. We have some stunning videos that I know Lisa will be able to share with you. Um, but this is all about glass. You're on a ship that you want to see out of because what out is outside is what is important. So her dining room, all of her public spaces have these beautiful windows that allow you to be in the destination continually. But it's you know, there are wet and dry saunas, there's um, a fitness center, a yoga room, that is a part of all of our trips is health and wellness. Um, there's a stunning jacuzzi, two of them on the back deck, infinity jacuzzis. And then the true exploration of it, the mud room where you store your gear and have access to your zodiacs and kayaks and an open bridge on all of our ships. This is where you can go up and spend time with the captain and on these ships, the bridge is big enough to hold all 126 guests and the expedition team so that you can be up there in the thick of it as we're going into these remarkable polar regions, which these ships are dedicated to. One of the really cool things on these vessels are two stunning glass igloos perched on the very back deck. They offer panoramic, route, uh, panoramic views. They're a great little retreat. Imagine the northern lights at the end of late September up in the Arctic or those stunningly long sunsets in high summer in Antarctica. Just being able to lay on that daybed and take it all in is pretty stunning. And, and look, at the end of the day, 
you want somewhere beautiful to go and rest your head because you want to get up and repeat again tomorrow and go out and explore her staterooms, particularly her suites on this ship are absolutely stunning. They're beautifully sized, you know, walk-in wardrobes, gorgeous bathrooms. But once again, our goal is to have you out with the community exploring as much as possible. So where do we go? And I wanted to touch on just a couple of spots that Lisa and I chatted to about Antarctica, right? We were the very first in Antarctica, as I said, in 1966. People go to Antarctica for the wildlife. But one of the remarkable things that captures them is the ice, the, the ever-changing icebergs and the ice patterns. And what's really remarkable is about that is what you see today is it's going to be different tomorrow. So you're capturing a moment in time that only you will see. Um, and it's different in different light. And it, it, is, it is really remarkable. And so that ice, that play of ice in Antarctica. But the idea is to be off the ship, hiking, going into penguin rookeries, having the opportunity to understand the wildlife in this region and the very short season, you know, end of October through end of February, that's your Antarctic season. That's when the wildlife is down there. It's breeding. That's when we can get down there and spend the time in our kayaks, um, out in the zodiacs, exploring quietly, sea level, water level, that very intimate experience and deploying all those great tools I talked about so that we can see what's above and below us on the peninsula down in Antarctica. And perhaps if you've got more time and can do Antarctica, South Georgia and the Falklands, you get to see these stunning little elephant seal pups or walk on a beach with 100,000 king penguins. The, the sound and the, the frenetic energy that comes from stepping foot surrounded by penguins and albatross overhead and elephant seals. It is one of the most remarkable wildlife experiences in the world. So multiple different itineraries from just the peninsula, the, the peninsula, South Georgia and the Falklands, Patagonia and the peninsula, and the epic granddaddy we do that goes all the way from Ushuaia to New Zealand, that western coast of Antarctica. Often I'll then get asked about the Arctic um, and people will kind of throw this into a basket and say, oh, I want to go to the Arctic. The Arctic is so many places. The Arctic is a multitude. It's the rugged coasts of Norway. It's small little villages in Greenland. It's not just wildlife. It's those rich indigenous cultures of the regions we visit. Um, it's such varied wildlife, walrus, polar bear, reindeer, birds, species that can be found nowhere else on earth, like this ivory gull, which is found only in the Arctic Ocean. So the Arctic is very different. It's the Russian Arctic, the Canadian Arctic. We do a Northwest Passage, a Northeast Passage. So you, when you're speaking with Lisa about the Arctic, the important thing is to kind of hone down what is it you want to see so we can help get you to the greatest opportunity to experience that. And then I know a place that's really close to Lisa and my heart is the Galapagos. Um, you know, we've been down there. We have two ships dedicated to these remarkable islands off the coast of Ecuador. Each of them is so different from even the colour of the sand, from red sand beaches to black ribbon lava to lush green landscapes to dry and arid. This, this is a remarkable place of differences and wildlife that is so inquisitive of us. There's absolutely no fear. Um, it's not uncommon to be standing with a zoom lens on your camera and have a bird perch on the end of your lens and kind of check you out. But for someone who wants a true wildlife experience, an intimate experience, the Galapagos Islands, both above and below the water, is a place that really does share that. Um, and the whole idea here is you're off in very small groups every day, like all of our expeditions. It's about intimacy of exploring and different options during the day. So different folks can do different things. And then the other place I wanted to touch on, which we've just, as along with Galapagos, we have just returned to Galapagos and Alaska last week. So our ships are in the water, they're exploring, but Alaska. And this is a place I think so many of us underestimate. We, we know that the big ships, we go, go there. We know that you can do it on land. But Alaska is about such an intimate experience. And I wanted to show you the map here because we go Sitka to Juno, Juno to Sitka. But we are going into these tiny little waterways, into these really narrow channels. That is where we spend our time. Our ship is only 100 guests up here. We have two ships at 100 
two get ships at 62 guests. But this is about getting off the ship every day, hiking into the forest, getting down on your hands and feet, parting the grasses and seeing tiny little carnivorous plants or seeing these multitude of gorgeous little orchids that are that are right beneath your feet and having a team that's going to point that out standing next to bare footprints uh, and realizing just how big a grizzly bear is by that paw print in the mud being able to hike out into these remarkable forests or sit in a zodiac at the face of a glacier surrounded once again by these stunning ice sculptures and they really are sculptures um, it, and it is just remarkable when you come around a corner and there are so many bald eagles in the trees that it looks like Christmas ornaments in the trees there are so many little white heads or you look out the window or stand on your balcony on the ship and there are so many sea otters with young on them it is it is a place of such beauty and such amazing wildlife and the opportunity to really see it up close quietly to take it in Alaska is about that. It is about the wildness, the wildlife, the understanding that it is more than just that main channel and, you know, some shopping. That's not Alaska. Alaska is these stunning small to the to the big. And being able to get out, once again, kayak, zodiac, paddleboard to explore, get up close, do it with friends and family. And look, we have an amazing program in Galapagos, Alaska, Baja and Antarctica which is our Global Explorers Program that we put together with National Geographic Education. And this is so focused on letting our youngest guests under 18 really delve into what it is to be the, the spirit of an explorer. They get to do hands-on research. They're out and they're, they're keeping notes. They're doing experiments. They're learning how to drive Zodiacs. They're given goals each day. And, and, and to see them engage in a place in that way for their parents or their grandparents, because we do so much multi-generational travel, it, it is such an awakening for the entire family. Those are memories that 30 years from now, you will still be able to recall where you were on that day. So look, with those, those are some of our key places we explore. But, you know, we were talking about this, Lisa, yesterday, weren't we? We, we also do Japan. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and this is such a cool uh, selection of itineraries. We actually have three. One starts in Nome, Alaska, but then it comes down the coast of Russia. So think Petropavlos, the Zhuponova River, down through the Kuril Islands, which are these volcanic, very different little islands, different types of experiences and wildlife, down to the top of Japan into Hokkaido. Then you have a trip dedicated to Japan. So the culture, the cuisine, the architecture of the North and South Island, but also spending time with the Shilla dynasty in South Korea. And then a third trip that takes you from that lower portion of Japan down through the Ryukyu Islands, which is once again, culturally so different to mainland Japan um, and stunning snorkeling and marine biodiversity around the Ryukyu Islands down into Taiwan. So very different experiences around these remarkable islands. And, and those are going next year in 2022. Um, the other ones that are close to my heart that I absolutely adore being an Aussie, um, you know, Indonesia, Bali, Raja Ampat, Papua New Guinea, the cultures here, the diversity, the marine biology in these regions is just remarkable. It's, it, it allows you to really understand these remote islands. And we have two stunning programs that go from either Singapore to Bali. So, and that, includes a stop at Krakatoa. Uh, I know many of you will remember that, that amazing volcano that decided to blow its top bl blanketed much of the planet in, in, in some dust. Um, so we get the chance to see the remnants, the little Krakatoa that's there. We get to go into Bali. The next trip is Bali over to Honiara. This one, I mean, up into Raja Ampat, the amazing snorkeling and diving as Matt Asmat and the cultural experience is, is, is just remarkable. Um, and so snorkeling, diving, culture, and then on to the lower part of Papua New Guinea. But as you can see, look, we do Egypt, we do the Nile, a stunning program on the Nile. We're in the Amazon, um, the Greek Isles, the Caribbean. I mean, it, we could be here all day. <laughs> so, so many places. But I know, Lisa, we wanted to leave a little bit of time to have 
a bit of a chat. So um, be happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, you know, so if anyone has any questions, um, you know, unmute yourself, you know, go ahead. I know myself yesterday, we were talking about Japan and, and yeah. how I have been there three times. And I have yet to go to the far <laughs> south and how it is just so um, beyond everything different than yeah. what you would know if you were visiting Tokyo, Osaka and all throughout. Yeah, it, it's a very different experience. It's a very much more of an island feel. Um, it is the people of Okinawa, uh, very different to mainland Japan. Um, the the marine the experience, the diving, the snorkeling, the beaches around the islands of the Ryukyu chain are absolutely stunning. But then to, to layer on top of that, going into Taiwan, right, and seeing the, the difference between Taiwan or Okinawa and Japan. I mean, it gives you three really unique cultural experiences as you come down through those islands. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And when you were talking about Tom being in Antarctica for 160 <laughs> times, I, I can only imagine the treat it would be for those when he's there for the 161st <laughs> time. It would be just absolutely amazing. I mean, the man is a treasure trove of information. And, and you know what's, what is so absolutely amazing, and I, kind of, I try to get this across to people, he, uh, he is as excited on one, the 160th trip as he was on the first trip. Oh, and, I would well imagine. Yes. And that's, that's what makes a big difference, right, with who you're traveling with. This sheer joy and passion and excitement in them wanting to share it with you. It, it's infectious. Um, and you just can't but smile when you're around people like Tom Ritchie. I mean, he just, he has that, that look about him. You're like, okay, this is just gonna be too much fun. Um, and I'm gonna learn a lot. And that's what makes it so, so that's what makes expeditions so unique and so remarkable. It's your opportunity, not just to see a place, but to understand it on a completely different level. Right. That was, that was my experience after my very first expedi expedition. Uh, we were in the Galapagos and you just had such a rich full day that at night you were like, I can't wait to find out what's, what's in store for us tomorrow. And we would all just huddle around at night just to find out. We were like, it's like Christmas morning every, <laughs> it was so exciting. And then we would go out in the morning and like you, you had mentioned, we were very fluid with our itinerary. There, there was times where uh, an incredible opportunity presented itself and it's like, okay, we're going to get back to that. Why don't we check this out right now? And, and that is, Lisa, that is, that is the essence of an expedition, right? Mm -hmm. it, is, it is often those moments that are the unplanned wildlife experience mm -hmm. that make the difference in a trip. And so you want to be, you want to have a team that can spin on a dime and take advantage of every one of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're in Alaska and there are bubble feeding whales over here, that's where you're going, right? To see that type of experience. Or we were down in Antarctica a couple of years ago and we had, we actually, we've got this great video and I'll share it with you so you can share it with folks. Um, we had a, a seal on the ice and a pack of killer whales were trying to um, push him off the ice. So they were doing this wave motion where they hunt together. And our guests came up on deck they brought up dinner onto the deck or the food up onto the deck and they watched this for a couple of hours as these this poor seal kept getting knocked off, jumping back up. They even named the seal. His name was Kevin the seal. Um, and Kevin the seal got away. He actually lived to you know fight another day. But it was this opportunity for our experts to to be able to share with guests, look, this is what these whales, these killer whales are doing. This is a cooperative training exercise for the younger whales this is them working in tandem to create this wave approach that's going to wash the seal off and you're seeing something very few people on this planet very few people on this planet will ever get the chance to experience and so dinner can wait yeah absolutely absolutely and i just love the idea of with these smaller vessels you're getting into locations where the bigger ships are not going to get. And then from there, once you're on the Zodiacs, it's a, it's a, an incredible world. Yeah, it is 
it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, not despite living in the north, well, in Canada, and not being a fan of the cold, <laughs> I am waiting with bated breath to get to Antarctica. I want to go cross country skiing there. And the whole idea with, with the, the photo locker is amazing. I love that idea so that people can go out, try out this equipment and capture their memories and review and enjoy their memories and, and think about what the next destination will be. And I, and I will say to you, one of the other great things about having a photographer on board is that they're also very good at telling you when to put the camera down. Um, Important. So, so often we live behind the lens of our phone or our camera and you don't take that moment to put it down and just be in the place mm -hmm. to really appreciate where you are. And so having someone whose whole job is photography say to you, put your cameras down, turn them off and just sit and listen to what is happening around you. That's a memory that you'll have forever. And often we're in such a rush to capture the picture, we, we don't take that moment. So mm -hmm. that's one of the other things they're so good at doing is making sure you are in the moment. And I would say to anyone who travels anywhere, make sure, even put it on your phone as an alert every day, take two minutes to just stop everything, turn everything off and be in the moment of the place you're visiting because it will change how you see it and how you experience it. And one question I often get asked, what about the gear? Yep. If you're going to the north, you're going to the south, um, how do you pack? Every destination is a little different. We're going to give you a full packing list. Right. So you've got everything you need. Um, on our ships in the Arctic and Antarctic, there is boot rental, uh, even in Alaska. And the boots are brilliant. And you want to use those. You don't want to drag heavy boots uh, all over the place. And these have got great soles. They're warm. They're going to keep your feet dry because we are doing wet landings, you know, where we are stepping into shallow water to get ashore. So those are great. Um, our ship to shore program, you can pretty much buy everything you need. You could turn up to Antarctica and everything can be on the bed if that's what you want to do. <laughs> Waterproof pants. I mean, you get your jacket that's provided to you and you get to take it home. You, your great big uh, expedition parker. Um, but, you know, up in Alaska, the packing list is, is, is really quite simple. It's like expedition gear. It's casual on board, right? It's not mm -hmm. dressy. Um, you know, a good hat with a tie string. Always make sure your sunglasses have a tie on them because when you look over the ship, you don't want them dropping in. If you have your beloved cell phone, have it in a floaty pouch. Don't be, oh my gosh, photo, um, lost the phone. You know, there, there are simple things we can help you. But I will tell you in most instances, and I'm sure you've seen this too, Lisa, you packed far too much stuff. So whatever you do get ready to pack, halve it, and then and then pack your bag because you know there's laundry on our ships so you can get stuff cleaned um you're not carrying your heavy boots it is casual um and and you just you don't need a lot of stuff layers in antarctica is the most important thing if you do yoga um if you go skiing you've got pretty much everything you need to pack your bag for antarctica it's about particularly you you canadians you, you know good took a couple of pairs of really warm gloves good woolen socks or good good socks for under your boots and everything else is just layers. But, you know, we're always happy to jump on the phone when you're packing. And if you're feeling a little anxious and like, oh, have I got everything? We can, we can get you through that. Okay. Well, that, that sounds wonderful because it's, it's a common question. So yeah. people, people are armed with a list in advance. Yeah. Yeah. Very so nice. they'll have an, an idea. And I, I, I'm just so struck by the idea of getting up close and personal, just delving into the environment. Yeah, where you are and seeing it. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking back to my ex my one expedition I've done and I have to do more because after you've done one, it it's a totally different experience. And um, I love it. I love the fact that you you learn something new every day. You experience something new every day. Yeah. And um, with that being said, if there aren't any questions, by all means, you can send them to me afterwards. And if I can't answer them, I'd be more than happy to reach out to Lisa on your behalf and get an answer for you. And um, 
With that, I want to say thank you everyone for joining us today. As usual, this is going to be uploaded to my YouTube channel. So if you want to watch it again, it will be available. And um, if you're looking for me on YouTube, it's Lisa Booth, B-O-O-T-H. <laughs> I didn't come up with a fancy name, just simply Lisa Booth. <laughs> so I want to thank everyone for joining me and I want to thank my guest, Lisa Bain. Thank you so very much for taking time out today. My and, and everyone have a lovely weekend. Thanks all. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>